Well, hello everyone. We're going to talk about rocks today. We're going to start by defining rocks, then looking at the different types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, uh, how they come together and how they form through the rock cycle, and then rocks and how we can use them to interpret our Earth's history. So let's begin. Okay, well, let's start with defining rocks. The definition of a rock is just an aggregate of a mineral. It's just a bunch of minerals that are held together to form a consolidated mass. Now, there are three ways in which minerals group up to form rocks. One, through uh, melting, or excuse me, through cooling from a melt. Those are rocks, we call those rocks from fire because they come from lava or magma. Those are igneous rocks. Igneous is the Latin word for fire. Sedimentary rocks are rocks that we find at the Earth's surface and that are created at the Earth's surface. And metamorphic rocks are cre created from heat and pressure from te plate tectonics. And so we'll discuss each of these rock types. Let's by begin by studying igneous rocks, rocks from fire. Igneous rocks, the rocks from fire, are rocks that result from the crystallization, crystallization from a melt. Uh, this can either uh, be from cooled magma or lava. Um, actually, magma and lava are the same thing. They're just different names for uh, molten rock. Magma is beneath the surface, and lava is the name for the rock at or near the Earth's surface that's molten. Um, we call rocks that cool from magma intrusive igneous rocks, meaning inside the Earth, and those cooled from uh, lava extrusive or ec outside of uh, the surface of the Earth. An example of an intrusive igneous rock would be like granite, um, and the the example of an extrusive igneous rock would be like basalt or obsidian. Intrusive igneous rocks form from the cooling of magma deep beneath the Earth's surface. Uh, note the batholith and pluton and dikes and sills and lacoliths in the picture on the right there. These are places in which if the magma doesn't make it to the surface, it just cools down slowly if it's not continuously being fed. As it slowly cools down, uh, it uh, and it also burn its way into different existing rock. But when it starts to cool down, very it, it cools down very slowly, and it has time to form large crystals in the rock matrix. And examples then would be granite and diorite and gabbro. I have a picture of diorite there and granite. You can see that the crystals, when we talk about big crystals, we're talking about crystals the size of your pencil eraser uh, in size. So we're not talking super big here. But nonetheless, the crystals are visible, and you can actually identify what di the different minerals are. Extrusive igneous rocks form from the cooling of lava and at or near the Earth's surface. As a result, the the rocks, the magma melts, forms very small crystals because it cools very quickly. The crystals don't have time to grow big, um, uh, nice connected crystal connections, and as a result, uh, the crystals are very small, um, about the size of a pencil point if you're comparing uh, sizes. Uh, note we have pictures here of uh, different types of mag different types of comp concentrations of magmas form different types of igneous rocks. Basalt is pictured here, rhyolite, andesite, these are all very fine-grained rocks. Uh, scoria and pumice are, are frothy textured uh, igneous rocks that form in this way. And then also obsidian is volcanic glass. It's, it cooled so quickly that there are no grains in the rock itself. Let's discuss sedimentary rocks, which are rocks from near, near the surface. So here are our rocks from the surface, sedimentary rocks. Um, they usually form from water in some way, so they really could also be called rocks from water um, in that uh, they either precipitate from water or are left behind from water evaporating or the water leaves behind cements that, that cement the grains together. There are three basic types then of sedimentary rocks, or three ways they can form, clastic, chemical, and organic. Clastic sedimentary rocks are those that form from rock fragments that are compacted and then cemented together. Or sometimes they could even be pressed together in the case of some muds and mudstones. Uh, shale is an example of that. But uh, most clastic sedimentary rocks have sediment grains, which are just little pieces of broken up rock from other rocks, other existing rocks from before. And these grains then are cemented together with 
um, a mineral cement. And what will happen is the rock gets compacted down and then water will usually trickle through those cracks or those uh, little gaps in the rock, rock grains and mineral mineral cements will precipitate or come out of the water and cling onto the sides of those grains thus locking them together in a cement. Examples shown there are breccia, conglomerate, and sandstone, all different varieties of this clastic sedimentary rock. The chemical sedimentary rocks, those are the ones that are just all cement. They're minerals deposited from water, either by the water evaporating away, leaving the, the minerals behind, or by chemical precipitation, where the, the minerals in the, that are kind of dissolved in the water um, will cling on to existing rock, uh, rocks and minerals uh, along the uh, sides of their paths to um, form uh, thick mineral deposits. Gypsum and halite are examples of these. these are, those are evaporites where water evaporates away and leaves behind the minerals. Um, and uh, chert and limestone are also variations of this where chemical precipitates come out of water um, in different areas. Our last category of sedimentary rocks then are organic sedimentary rocks and these are made from organism remains. Coal or chalk or limestone. These are all rocks that are made from once existing organisms. Um, and so uh, coal is made from uh, swamps and, and plants uh, in swamps. Chalk from tiny shells of little marine organisms. And uh, limestone made from cemented fossils. Um, all of those then are organic sedimentary rocks. Let's discuss metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are those rocks from heat and pressure. Metamorphic rocks undergo metamorphosis. They change because uh, plate tectonic and tectonic forces and gravitational forces will push on these rocks so much and there's usually a lot of heat involved from uh, nearby magma that uh, the magma and uh, pressure actually create a, a situation where the rock actually the minerals in the rock will partially melt and recrystallize into their most compact form or shape as you can see pictured here is a diorite and the diorite is uh, several little grains of minerals put together and those minerals are recrystallized in the most compact shape uh, to form the layered rock you see below which is called gneiss. Minerals uh, will chemically interlock into these bands or layers which are called foliation and uh, so gneiss the rock you see on the bottom right there that is a foliated metamorphic rock. So metamorphism can occur in two basic ways. One through just simply being in contact with heat. This is called contact metamorphism. And then also uh, by heat and pressure due to tectonics. Uh, if you come into a region that has a convergent plate boundary, for example, or a subduction zone, this, this provides the pressure and heat necessary to actually really uh, make those rocks change form into metamorphic rocks. So contact metamorphism in contact with heat or regional metamorphism where we have both heat and pressure. Contact metamorphic rocks then uh, recrystallize their grains from the, the partially melting uh, conditions and as a result the grains are chemically interlocked together at that point. If you take limestone for example, limestone will uh, form uh, um, marble and when uh, uh, sandstones are partially melted they'll recrystallize into quartzite. Uh, regional metamorphic rocks are, are formed from the heat and pressure and so you oftentimes get that layering or foliation, those bands in the rock itself, slate, phyllite, schist, and gneiss are all examples there. The rock cycle is how, is, is basically connecting all the different rock types and how they form together. So let's take a look. In the rock cycle, we have our three rock types, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, but we also take into account the magma and sediment, which are both earth materials relevant. And the chemical elements that reside in the earth's crust in the form of minerals reside in each of these types of earth materials. The earth processes involved in the, the rock cycle include things like uh, uplift and weathering and erosion, subsidence which is basically compaction of sediment and then cementation of it and then melting and crystallization that occurs uh, throughout the uh, processes in the earth and then metamorphism so if we pair the 
materials from of the earth with the processes of the earth we can actually kind of come up with a little cycle of how this all operates together so here's a picture of all the earth materials in a box in in um, kind of arranged in a circle there and if we magically uh, enter in the earth processes we see uh, all of them kind of are relevant to one another and they relate to one another uplift weathering and erosion then produces broken up rock pieces or sediment that sediment subsides and cements to form sedimentary rock sedimentary rocks can undergo metamorphism to form metamorphic rocks metamorphic rocks can melt to form magma magma can crystallize to form igneous rock and so forth and so the cycle uh, continues now it's of note that most rocks can also can all be uplift weathered and eroded metamorphosed or melted and so we need to add a few more arrows in here if you take arrows in uh, from all rock types and put them into melting uh, take arrows from all rock types and and point them at metamorphism and take arrows from all rock types and point them at weathering and erosion we have a complete cycle and there's really no beginning or end if we really had to have a beginning it would be when the earth was uh, kind of a molten mass to start with but from that point uh, the rocks have been cycling from one type to another for the last four and a half billion years let's discuss how rocks can be used to uh, give us information about our past environments We're actually able to use our knowledge of Earth's materials to reconstruct Earth history. If we look at the layers of rock found all over the world and the fossils found within these rocks, and we take the uh, ages of these rocks, scientists are able to then surmise the general history of the Earth from base basically the very beginning, uh, where we find the oldest rock layers, all the way up to the most recent rock layers. And they've done this and put together a geologic time scale. In our uh, next lectures, we're going to learn how to exactly read rocks in order to determine the history of the Earth, and then put it all together to form a snapshot of the history of a region. So that's our discussion on Earth materials, starting with how uh, the actual chemicals of the Earth come together to form minerals, and then from those minerals, uh, how they're, those minerals are grouped and how they're used, and how those minerals come together to form rocks, three different types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, and how those rock types change from one to the other because of Earth processes. And we've learned also that we can use these rocks to tell us about and give us information about Earth's history. And so that's the direction we're going in subsequent lectures. Thank you for listening.